Boris Johnson tells David Frost to walk away from the Brexit talks and Guy Verhofstadt thinks that Ed Davey could keep Britain in the EU. Hello everyone and welcome to today's show. Uh, it seems like uh, the European Union are not doing too well as usual during these Brexit talks because uh, Boris Johnson has now given full power to David Frost, the chief negotiator from the UK side, to walk away from the Brexit talks, cancel the whole thing and trigger no deal uh, or WTO Brexit. According to CTAM from this morning, it says that the UK is now ready to walk away from the Brexit trade talks over the state aid demands. I mean, of all the things that we could kick off <laughs> about, it's all about state aid. Uh, we're going to talk, we're going to analyze the whole thing um, on this show with Andre Walker, our Sunday contributor. But before we do that, let's have a look at this article because um, David Frost has now told uh, Michel Barnier, the EU negotiator, that the UK is not willing to compromise on this point as the potential of a no deal exit draws closer. Uh, Brussels is demanding that the UK adopt the EU rules that prevent the government from subsidizing domestic companies or nationalizing them uh, because they want that level playing field. They want, uh, you know, they pretend and claim that this is in the interest of competition and fairness when it comes to the European markets. In reality, they don't do that. They always uh, favor the Italian industries and the French industries. We know that. Uh, but it says that uh, the, the EU are also demanding that Britain aligns its regulations on other things like labor and environmental standards uh, in what would be known as a level playing field for businesses on both sides of the channel. Now, in return, the UK would continue to trade with the EU, uh, well, the, the UK uh, on a no tariff basis. So they think that all we're obsessed with is no tariff. Uh, in reality, they don't know that you know, there's no need to say yes to political alignment just for the sake of uh, zero tariff trade. Because if we want to manage our own, obviously, trade agreement and regime, we are now part of the World Trade Organization and we could do that ourselves. But that's one issue for them. Now, a, so a source close to David Frost has now sold, uh, told the Sunday Times that uh, he has made it clear to Barnier that as things stand, he would have to recommend to Boris that we go for no deal. Uh, there has been a discussion about whether uh, or not to compromise on state aid, and Boris has said no. So for those people who, I mean, you know that I've been criticizing Boris Johnson's government on a number of domestic policies. They haven't been brilliant, but when it comes to the EU and Brexit, they've been pretty solid. And it will be massively embarrassing for Boris Johnson and David Frost to compromise and U-turn on this state aid issue and the level playing field because they spent the last few months keep saying that no 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 we're not doing it the moment they compromise not only they're losing they will lose the brexit vote uh, the brexit here side uh, but also the whole country would see uh, boris johnson's government as a complete u-turn government and that's i don't think it's going to happen uh, it's also unlikely that the eu would actually compromise they might last minute as usual but if they don't then as boris johnson has said no deal is coming but if you're a Remainer watching this, don't worry, you have a saviour. Ed Davey is here to save you. <laughs> Ed Davey is now the new Lib Dem leader uh, who has, who's very excited about his new job. Uh, he's been acting leader and the uh, Lib Dems have been going down in the opinion polls. But his best friend, Guy Verhofstadt, who is a regular attendee at the Lib Dem conference, uh, this guy who uh, is an obsessed EU federalist, He's uh, also very excited about Ed Davey. He has said that congratulations, Ed Davey, on your election to lead the Lib Dems. The radicalized Tory party of 2020, <laughs> I mean, radicalized Keynesian, radicalized socialist, I don't know, uh, chooses isolationism. The same Tory party and Tory government are currently negotiating with Canada, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, South Korea. Yeah, isolationist and anti-European dogma over cooperation. As an internationalist with conviction, <laughs> I know you and your party have the chance to change this. Really? I mean, you can try. Good luck with that. But we have Boris Johnson in this area. He's not going to change his mind, is he? I don't think so. Um, but if he does, obviously, that'll be massively embarrassing for him and his party. So on this issue, he has to stay strong. He has now obviously ordered 
David Frost to use his mandate and power to cancel the talks and uh, prepare for October uh, to then prepare the country to go out on no deal. Now, to discuss all this, we have Andre Walker, our Sunday contributor. A lot of you know who Andre Walker is. Let's go to him and analyze this whole situation. So now we're joined by, uh, obviously, Andre Walker, our Sunday contributor. Welcome to the show, Andre. How are you? Fantastic. What a joyous day. Hallelujah. It looks like uh, the British government has finally got its act together. All of those sad days of Ollie Robbins and Theresa May and indeed John Burko attempting to stymie Brexit all just looks like it's behind us. And people of little faith, how many people on this channel and indeed on mine uh, said that uh, Boris Johnson would never have the guts to do this. Yeah, that's the thing. So again, well, yeah, we just have to wait and see the last minute, obviously, if they don't change their mind. But I think this this is the one area that the Boris Johnson government have been quite solid on. Uh, with everything else, we've been criticising them because they're going slightly socialist and everything else domestically. But on this issue, because uh, kn they know that this is their main base, if they alienate the Brexit vote, they are done. So if they try to make a U-turn on this or compromise with the EU last minute, then, you know, they, they've lost the whole government, considering now Keir Starmer is now polling at 40%. It's now basically even. Uh, but let's just focus on the positives, because, you know, uh, it's actually the, the time that we have to uh, almost celebrate that we are finally actually leaving the EU, aren't we? <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, look, I um, I think it, this is a hugely important moment. It really is. And always remember something. We are critical of Boris Johnson, but at the same time, uh, Keir Starmer is just such a danger on this issue. He is somebody that would absolutely capitulate to Europe. He's desperate, hell-bent. And, of course, uh, as you pointed out before we came on air, I hadn't seen it, but this tweet from Giva Hofstadt, where he's saying that he still hopes that Britain can stay in the EU. Yeah, that that's actually quite funny because uh, uh, he, I mean, he is a proper fundamentally a EU federalist, and uh, he's not just one of those that you know just wants to be a Europhile. He's completely he believes in the United States of Europe. Um, I don't think even Ed Davey actually believes in the United States of Europe. You know, he's pro EU. He probably prefers the UK to stay in the EU. I don't think even Ed Davey is as bad. But Guy Verhofstadt is basically putting all his eggs in one basket, which is the Liberal Democrats. They were doing so badly in the polls. Uh, and uh, so obviously there's no hope for them. But I, I, that reminds me, we're talking about obviously the political parties and, and you know, Lib Dems, Tories and Labour. Um, there is one issue that uh, the Tories uh, are going to the left. Uh, and uh, the view is that, my view is that it's because there's no opposition from any other right wing party. Uh, the, the main pressure is from the Labour Party. And so that's why they think that they just have to keep the Labour vote and the Labour base happy. Uh, what's the solution? Should we like take over the Lib Dems and, and, and make it sound? <laughs> yeah, it, it is really difficult because the two-party system. Look, mm. you know, I voted Conservative in the last election, but then again, I live in Windsor, where really the Brexit Party or UKIP were never going to do anything. I don't know if you know, the MP for Windsor, Adam Afriye, was one of the founders of Business for Sterling. And in fact, I think was, was one of the principal architects of the referendum within the Conservative Party. He's the guy who collects up all of the letters of no confidence against David Cameron mm. and threatened to put them in if he didn't capitulate to the, to the referendum. But even in places like Hartlepool, where we just thought that mm. Richard Tice might, might get in for the Brexit party, it just didn't happen. And so even though we've been able to have great games in local government and indeed in the European Parliament when we're members of the EU, we've just never been able to do anything within the House of Commons. I would love there to be effectively two right-wing parties. Mm. Um, the, the, the Conservative Party really in Southern England representing the sort of you know, middle-class Southern England type vote. And then for there to be a, the Brexit Party to have represented much more of the working class in Northern England. But mm. it has to be said, you know, when you go to places like Lee, um, the Conservative Party did in fact win. And so maybe, maybe there is more of a broad base, but... As we all know, there's a lot of middle class conservatives in the south of England who cannot be trusted uh, when it comes to a whole host of issues. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, the, the, on, on the one hand, you've got the, the southerners, the southern Tories uh, who are quite wet, a lot of them. And they, they you know, they, they actually want big government. Uh, and then you've got the, the, the northern, obviously, bloc uh, who are obviously 
more patriotic, obviously, pro-country and everything else. Uh, but um, a lot of them are still pro-NHS and that sort of stuff as well. So it is very difficult. And I think if you have two right-wing parties to put pressure on each other, you also have to change the way the first-past-the-post system works because it's it's kind of outdated. I, I don't really have the perfect solution because I don't think AV is the right idea either, uh, considering the, the political parties that well, we have. Well, that, that, the, the, therein lies the problem, Maya, because if you think about it, if we were to go for electoral reform, but, you know, it would make it potentially far, far worse because, of course, you'd end up with one of these systems where, you know, oh, I don't know, um, you know you, whichever way you vote, it would always end up with the Lib Dems in power, <laughs> which I just think is, is so dangerous. So yeah. we've, we've never found a good solution. Although, look, the, the we've never managed to make that breakthrough in the House of Commons for the UK, for UKIP or the Brexit Party, but they have managed to influence government policy. So I I don't think the people that voted for those parties wasted their votes. No, you're right. They don't actually have to get seats in Parliament to put pressure on Tory party. And it, it's happened before. You're absolutely right. Uh, but, you know, let's just focus on the positives. We're leaving the EU properly this time. And uh, well, again, we have a couple of months left until to make sure that David Frost and Boris Johnson uh, don't change their mind. Uh, but uh, thanks again for coming on the show. Obviously, you have your uh, channel that's going really well. What is it now? 22,000, 21,000 subscribers? I think, I think I've got about 22,000 subscribers, uh, 1.3 million views since launch, and the new set. What do you think? Yeah, I forgot to actually mention that new set is really good. You can't, but people can't see the whole thing because obviously we've got half a screen, but uh, you can see the, the background and the, those frames. I don't know what they are, but uh, <laughs> what's going on there? Um, but for yeah, those of you... Coat of arms? That's a coat of arms, yeah. What, what, what's the other two behind you? Uh, so, so this is my colonelcy of Kentucky, which was given to me by the governor of Kentucky, which, believe it or not, Harlan Sanders received for chicken frying, hence <laughs> Colonel Sanders. Um, so I've got the same colonel as him. I'm not joking. This is freedom of the city of London. And actually, I should explain, um, every state in America give out either colonelcies or admiralties, or most of them do, as a kind of almost like their version of an MBE or whatever. But... Uh, there's a great joke in Nebraska, which is down here. Uh, they went for they went for admiralty, even though they're landlocked. And apparently, it's based on a story from years ago, where at some point the federal government demanded that Nebraska uh, send an admiral to Washington, and they didn't have any, so they, they created the admiralty. Uh, so that's, that's quite fun. That's actually a quite cool story. Uh, but for um, obviously the members of, of the channel. Uh, Andre and I are just going to go and get ready for our Sunday video podcast, which is a longer version of this. We just rant about everything that's happened throughout the whole week. Uh, if you want to obviously become a member and take advantage of that and all the other exclusive content, then check out the link in the description or just go on youtube.com slash myTC slash join. Also, Andre, where, what's your channel again? How do they find you? Yes, yeah, so it's Andre JP Walker. We always put the link up yeah. on the sidebar okay. and in the description. Sorry, not on the sidebar, the top. I don't know which side it is, but yeah. it should be up there with an eye. Yeah, um, yeah Andre JP yeah. Walker, come and get, come on board. The the vibe is slightly different. Um, obviously, your shows are kind of 10, 15 minutes. Mine are normally about three and a half. Just a few daily briefings of some of the big issues of the day. And so uh, I always find it quite good fun. And, yeah. that, and people seem to quite like it. Yes, exactly. Go subscribe. I'll put the link in the description, but also on the screen as well. And we'll see the members on the Sunday video podcast. And oh, just another heads up, a lot of the members have been messaging saying, how do we access the members only videos? Uh, we've actually on the homepage of the channel, if you scroll down, there's a new section, just members only videos. Check it out. We'll see you guys in the next video.